Welcome to the first module of our corn production lesson. Corn has been around for thousands of years, and during that time, people have been adapting it to better fit their needs through crop breeding. We will trace the improvements that have made modern corn what it is today. Take a look at this plant. Does it look familiar? This plant, one of several Teosinte species, may be one of corn's possible wild ancestors. You might wonder, why does our modern corn look so different? Corn is the way it is today because ancient people improved wild plants by selecting characteristics to suit their needs. Many of the crops of today, not just corn, are quite different from the plants humans originally found thousands of years ago. Crop improvement started with crop domestication, the process of adapting wild plants for use as food. In the beginning, humans simply gathered wild plants for food and other uses. Over 10,000 years ago, humans started to cultivate and purposely grow certain wild plants. The process of domestication took place gradually and simultaneously occurred in many different regions around the world. This map shows different crops in the regions in which they were domesticated. Can you see where corn was domesticated? Plants were improved for human use by crop breeding. The purposeful selection of plants for desired traits has been an important factor in human development throughout our history. Our ancestors knew that offspring tend to resemble their parents, and they also knew which plant traits were the most beneficial for their needs. Because they knew these things, they saved the seed from the best plants for the next planting season. Plants with traits that were beneficial to early farmers were chosen and propagated, while plants with traits that were not valuable were not chosen. Over a long period of time with selection by people, Teosinte came to more closely resemble modern corn. Thousands of years ago, early farmers focused on a few main traits when selecting for the best grain crops. Yield was an important trait to them, and this is not surprising. It is clearly useful to select individual plants that produce more grain. The size of the seed was another key trait. The larger seeds were easier to harvest and process. Early farmers also saved seed from those plants that didn't have shattering issues. Shattering is when the seed falls from the plant when it is ripe. Selecting for non-shattering meant that more seed could be harvested. Another trait related to harvest is lack of seed coatings. Some grains have seed coatings that make grinding or processing the seed more difficult. Corn had a long history of breeding thousands of years before Columbus arrived in the New World. Let's look at the very beginning of corn development, before corn was actually corn. We will start the section on Native American breeding by discussing more about corn's wild ancestors and where corn originated. Where did corn come from? The center of origin is the geographical area where a crop was domesticated. For corn, the center of origin is in the Balsas Valley area in Mexico. Teosinte species are thought to be the wild ancestors of our modern-day corn. The wild ancestors of corn looked much different from our modern corn. Teosinte has more branching than modern corn. It has multiple small cobs per plant as well as multiple tassels. The seed is triangular in shape and has a hard seed coat. It took researchers a long time before they came to the conclusion that Teosinte was the likely ancestor of our modern corn because of its appearance. However, DNA evidence has confirmed it. Let's 
Let's compare teosinte seed to corn seed. It definitely has a different size, shape, and color from modern day corn. One big difference is the thick seed coat, called a fruit case, that covers teosinte seed. We can see the seed coat here where it has been removed from a seed. Corn does not have this hard seed coating. Another difference is that teosinte does not have a cob like corn. The latest evidence suggests that corn was domesticated around 9,000 years ago. The photo above is a recreation of what the earliest corn may have looked like. Early corn lacked a seed coat, which made it easier for ancient people to use and eat. The traits for which Native American breeders selected changed over time. Let's take a look at those traits. In the beginning, early Native Americans primarily selected for larger yields such as more kernels per cob and larger kernels. Teosinte only had about 6 to 12 kernels per cob, but early corn had many more kernels that were somewhat larger. Things only improved over the next thousands of years. Eventually, early breeders developed corn with even more and larger kernels, such as this flint corn. Around 3,000 years ago, Native Americans also started selecting for traits related to the quality of the kernels to make better tortillas. This resulted in changes in the kernels for increased protein and higher quality starch for making the tortillas. Can you think of any other crop that has so much variation in grain color? How did corn come to be so diverse? It is due to two main factors, skilled breeding and diverse genetics. Native American agriculture accomplished some amazing things. Next, we will discuss these Native American achievements. We know Native Americans domesticated teosinte and through breeding turned it into a very different plant. They may not have known everything that we do today about corn genetics, but what they did know was very powerful. Specific Native American achievements include development of corn that is adapted to new climates and new agricultural systems, while maintaining pure lines and developing the primary types of corn. By the time Columbus arrived to the New World, corn was being grown in a wide variety of climates, from tropical islands to deserts to regions with very cold winters. Remember where corn was domesticated? It was in central Mexico, which had a warm and wet climate. Corn plants from this era would not have been adapted to growing in Minnesota, for instance. We have Native American breeders to thank for the fact that we can now grow corn in the Midwest. How did a tropical plant become adapted to northern regions? Around 1300 years ago, there was an eight-row soft flower strain of corn in northwest Mexico called Pueblo corn that was adapted to cooler environments, easy to grind, and highly productive. Pueblo corn eventually made its way north into the United States and southern Canada. It was the precursor for the flint and flour corn used by the Native Americans in the Midwest and New England areas of the New World. It eventually became what we call Northern Flint, a hard starch type of corn that plays an important role in the history of dent corn. If you watched our Biology of Corn lesson, you might remember that corn is a cross-pollinating species. However, cross-pollination may not be desirable to plant breeders. Native Americans knew how to isolate cornfields so that one type of corn did not pollinate another type. This kept breeding lines pure and allowed them more control over the breeding process. They knew how to keep their corn pure and were also well aware of what scientists call the Xenia effect. This is when one plant's foreign pollen causes a change in another plant's seeds. 
Because the Native Americans knew this, they planted different types of corn in separate fields. If they didn't plant the corn types separately, they would get a mixture of the different corn kernel types. Confused? A good example of the Xenia effect can be seen in this picture. Cross-pollination between two corn plants with different colored kernels has resulted in the production of ears with multiple colors of kernels. Other factors that can be affected in corn by the Xenia effect are sweetness, starchiness, and waxiness. Crop breeding and development of agricultural systems co-evolved together. Native Americans in different regions did not have the same types of cropping systems. They developed many techniques such as irrigation, terracing, fertilizing, and polycultures. Many Native American cultures in North America used polycultures, which is companion planting where several crops are grown next to each other. For example, a type of polyculture that Native Americans used is called the Three Sisters, where corn, beans, and squash are planted together on a mound. This system was beneficial because the corn stalks provide physical support for the growing squash vines, the beans provide a source of nitrogen for the other plants, and the squash provides ground cover to shade out weeds. The different types of corn we have today have been around for quite some time. These include flint, flour, popcorn, and sweet corn that have differing compositions, shapes, and colors. For more information on all the different types of corn, please see our corn uses lesson. We will now examine some of the diversity that early breeding accomplished. Some of the corn developed hundreds or maybe even thousands of years ago may still be present today in the form of land races. Land race corn is a variety specific to a certain region. Let's look at some of these land races to get an idea of the diversity that Native Americans developed. Bolita is a land race from Mexico. It is a flint corn that comes in white, yellow, red, and black. The land race Kainga is a flint type that comes in white from Brazil. Look at the differently shaped kernels. Canaco Norteño is a land race from Mexico. It is a dent type that comes in white, yellow, and red. The ears are cone shaped. Pepatilla is a flower type corn in red, yellow, white, and black. Note the interesting shape of the kernels. Reventador is a popcorn from Mexico. You can see its kernels don't look that different from our popcorn today. By the time Columbus landed in the Americas in 1492, there were already hundreds of land races of corn growing from southern Canada to south-central Chile. This map shows how far corn might have spread by the 1400s from its center of origin. Corn was important to Native Americans, and it would continue its importance in agriculture as Europeans colonized the New World. As Europeans arrived in the New World, they encountered corn, a new crop that was very foreign to them. Ultimately, they benefited greatly from the corn breeding work that Native American breeders had done. In this section, we will discuss the transition from Native American corn to the next era of corn breeding. Native Americans developed hundreds of diverse types of corn. All these corn types have one thing in common. They are what we call open pollinated varieties. Open pollinated corn types are much different than the type of corn that is predominantly grown now. 
Very little of this type of corn is grown today. To understand open pollinated corn, let's explain cross pollination briefly. Cross pollination is the transfer of pollen from a flower on one plant to the stigma of a flower on a different plant. That's why we call all of the older corn types open pollinated varieties. The corn plants are allowed to cross pollinate and reproduce freely. In corn, wind helps facilitate the pollen transfer. Farmers who grew open pollinated corn would save some of the seed that was produced to grow for the following season. Open pollinated corn often was not very uniform in appearance because it was not genetically uniform. When Europeans began colonizing the New World, they adapted corn into their agricultural systems. The colonists learned from the Native Americans how to cultivate indigenous crops like corn, beans, and squash. While colonists learned a great deal from the Native Americans, their agricultural systems evolved to the use of monocultures, where just a single crop is grown at a time, similar to how things were grown in their native countries. This photo shows a field of corn grown in a monoculture in 1897 in Iowa. Colonists not only used corn in their agricultural systems, they also began to do their own selection and breeding to make corn suit their purposes. One early breakthrough in corn development was Reed's Yellow Dent Corn. In 1847, a farmer named Robert Reed in Illinois accidentally mixed two corn varieties within the same field, inadvertently crossing a variety called Gordon Hopkins Gourd Seed and a variety called Little Yellow Flint. The farmer spent many years selecting for improvements, and the end result was Reed's Yellow Dent. This corn had much higher yields than either parent variety. Modern corn that we grow today is derived from this corn. Just as corn was prevalent in Native American cultures, it later also came to dominate the agriculture of the United States. By the mid-1800s, the U.S. corn crop was five times greater than other cereal and vegetable crops put together. Let's look at this chart. In less than 50 years, corn production quadrupled. In 1905, the U.S. was producing 3 billion bushels, equivalent to 168 billion pounds of corn. The work of the Native Americans and early farmers laid the groundwork for the dramatic changes in corn production that would occur with modern crop breeding. We have now completed our discussion of Native American corn breeding. This ends part one of our corn breeding lesson. Please see corn breeding part two to continue.